or sometimes she is an artist and an actress um, who um, uh, does headshot photography for a living and has been for many years now, uh, based in Hollywood. And uh, she uh, has been an old friend of mine for 20 something years. We'll just yeah. say, you know, Michael, 1993. Michael, you were a grad student at Michigan State University when I was an undergrad at Michigan State. Okay, all right, so I'm a little older. Okay, all right, yeah, that's how it goes. All right, <laughs> truth, truth, I admit it. Um, I'm in North Hollywood because it's cheaper real estate for, uh, for the studio. <clears throat> North Hollywood. Yeah, and, uh, and like an industrial kind of little studio, uh, industrial area. That's just north of South Hollywood, right? <laughs> it's like in the valley as opposed to Hollywood, which is, you know, over the hill. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you don't know. It doesn't. But you, so like when I knew you. Yes. You were a painter. I did. I was an art I did, uh, yeah, an art major as a painter and drawer. I remember. Yeah. And an actress. Yeah, well, I was sort of, yeah, I ended up in the theater department more than I was in the art department. <laughs> but so. now, you know, 27 years later, you've been featured in books. Uh, your photos have been in New York Times. Um, you've worked with, I don't know, how many hundreds of actors to get them work every single day. Thousands for the last at this point, I think. How yeah. many? Probably thousands. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. So I, mean, I have never added it all together, but it's several terabyte drives full of headshots. Oh my God. I have like, I have like drives that are like, I have this, a huge stack of. So I have, I don't have it readily available, uh, something very similar, but it's a stack of headshots that are physically printed yeah. out that go. fit into a bookshelf that I've carried around with me. Yeah, what for a waste! Of Twenty-seven printing. years. I know. No one. You don't need to print stuff anymore. I don't think it's very uh, rare. So all the printer printing places are kind of they're trying to find other things to do. So uh, a lot of them are doing reels, or they're doing um, websites, or they'll do. Um, uh, what else do they do at printing places? They'll, yeah, they'll build websites. They, they take headshots. They'll like hire like an in-house photographer, like at reproductions. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And a lot of them like just got rid of their places and just became like you upload your headshot and they'll send you the, your prints, you know? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. Thinking, so now like they tell you just to print like when you need them, like print live. Uh, uh. Yeah, 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 you can do that now. Well, and now that even auditions are like this, they're not even in person, I don't think there is gonna be any printing. Of they're it. making any money. So everything can change, everything can change. So, yeah. so I wanna come in, I wanna go into that a little yes. bit, but, but it first. It really explains the stylistic change also of a headshot. Mm, mm. So well, let's talk about that. But before we get into that, though, yes, can, give me, give us just a quick. How did you get to where you are? I was born. Quick overview. I know. Yeah, I I go long on this. So here, uh, so <laughs> Michigan State with you, and then um, I I decided uh, to continue my education, but I wasn't sure what to do. I ended up in San Francisco. Um, for a year, uh, for two years, for pursuing acting. I took, uh, I worked at ACT and at their theater there. And then I thought, oh, I kind of stuck here, San Francisco, this sucks. I'm going to try to go to grad school because I have no money. So I got into the University of Washington in Seattle and uh, went up there to Seattle, spent three years getting my MFA, um, came down to LA. And I came here at kind of a pandemic time. I got here and there was a big writer strike. And there was also, um, there's a mosquito. There was a, I'm 80. Uh, there was a writer strike and there was also a, um, uh, what else was it? A 9-11, right when I moved, right after yeah. that. So the whole yeah. industry was freaking out, kind of shut down. It was just like this, like everything rebooted. And I had done a showcase here, had all these great responses from it. And then every single one when we when I came out was like, well, right now we just don't know. Like, keep us posted. 
And so I was desperately looking for other stuff to do. And I ended up in a casting office. And I met my now husband, Vance DeGeneres. I was Joanne Brooks at that time. Yep. And, um, I worked in casting and waited tables. And then I met my husband, he had a band and I picked up a camera and the combo of the casting office and the camera and the light bulb above my head was like, I could do headshots. And it was before Facebook. So I had to like, I remember walking around to casting offices and handing out postcards. I had a website for my acting name, which was Joanna Brooks, which became my headshot website. And I just was like, I'm gonna do this other thing for and see if I can make it work. And it excited me because it took my art, painting, draw, it took everything I knew. It took my art, it took my acting, it took my um, uh, skills in everything and everything, casting, and it just kind of came and they converged in like a big like, and it was that, and here I am. And I think oh, here I, you are. I hit at the right time. Like everything was switching from black and white to color, from film to digital. So when I picked up the camera and started to do it, it everyone was new at color headshots. So even though there were photographers in LA that had been taking headshots forever and were like these, everyone goes to these black, they were now having to shoot color and it was all looking kind of weird because mm -hmm. color digital had a funny red, like weird tones to it, right? I remember. So, yeah, it started. so it just shows like everything changes, even technology. Now digital cameras have surpassed a film camera. You can make a digital camera photo look like a film camera photo it's crazy it's all so, that's what's really interesting is is that point that you're making there which is and and this is kind of the way uh i think our theater company's kind of been looking at this situation is um everything has changed mm -hmm. um acknowledging it looking at um you know, what are your special skills or what are the things that make you special or different? And then how can you use it mm -hmm. to your advantage and come up with uh, a way forward that is special, you know, to you, some way that you can contribute or be creative or contribute and all of that. So um, we're there again, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it's like, you know, I think, well, and I think sort of the way time changes that it, it that um what's i'm so bad with i lose my words um but that informs how everything else changes mm -hmm. so when everything went to color and off and to digital everything also went online for casting so suddenly a lot of three quarter shots for headshots like you remember your knees were kind of bent in them or like it would be like much more of your body in a photo oh, yeah. And then suddenly it was like you were online in a little being submitted in these little squares. So it, that the big feet and your knees and stuff just looks weird. So then it comes closer. And so it's just like, oh, then, like so that's why those went away. Yeah, because it's di like it's digital, like it yeah, yeah, yeah. changed. And then color. So if you then have a black and white photo, and you're being submitted online like when you look at everyone's photos even if you look at this little bar whatever like you look at the ones that you can that are bright and that pop out and you see people's eyes and so there's this word pop for headshots and all that and it just so, matters because you're being submitted online yeah so so let's go into that a little bit right so now everyone uh everyone has one of these right everyone has one of these things in their their pockets now so what Anyone can be a photographer, right? Anyone in theory could be doing these shots and creating these. Um, uh, how do you compete with that? Well, cause they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, you know, everyone has a, everyone has a rebel T whatever camera too. And everyone see, you know, it's like, yes, anyone can take a photo, but your, it, it my feeling as an actor is that you basically have three things you have control over. One is your physical person and what you do with it, because you control the, your hair, your, how you wear your clothing, all that, right? How you take care of your skin and your teeth and da 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 da. The other is how your resume, your classes, what you do for um, building your, uh, uh, you know, 
getting experience or taking classes or workshops or things like this or however you bring knowledge about your craft and the third is your your tool it's the only thing like that goes out before you and that's your photo mm, and mm, so mm. you don't have to you have very little you have to really spend money on because you don't really have to spend, you know, it's like, it's not like any other career. If you're the boss of your career and you're an actor, it's like, it's very little that you're really have to take care of. It's yourself and your photo. You are the instrument. You are marketing yourself. Yeah, and like, so it sounds like what you're saying is a, your resume, a big <laughs> part of that resume is a good photo and that's what they're going to see and that's what the first judgments are going to be on yeah because if someone because if it's your say it's your job like say you work at a restaurant and so and two people walk in and apply for a waiting tables job and one of them just has something typed out cleanly that explains their what they've done and the other person has scrawled it in crayon on a piece of paper and you're like oh are you really gonna be like oh i like this creative person's crayon Thing. Or are you going to think, you know, the other person's probably more organized. They probably actually care about what they're doing. They're going to take the time. They want this job. It's the same for your headshot. It's like if you just have a crappy photo of yourself that's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's not fine when someone looks at it and they are that they know what they're looking for. And that's your photo. It's Especially like, oh, when there's don't really care. So I don't know if I want to meet that person. Well, I mean, and especially if it's your first job yeah, sure. with them, right? Once you're in the door, then you get a whole nother set of things. But getting in that first job, whether it's film, theater, doesn't matter what, that is that first representation. And, and you're saying that kind of is that professional first step forward to say, uh, I'm, I stand out. Right. And you, and you fake it till you make it. Right. So you don't, you don't go, I don't really know. I mean, if you want, like, so my uncle Bernie, he's in his seventies. He's a great look. He's just, this, he's got a tooth missing. He's this big guy, bald head, he's Scottish. He's amazing. Something for me to aspire to. I took a great headshot of him because he's like, hey, and I got this agent to like submit him for, and he had a big audition. It was a really good one. He was perfect. It was like, it was basically one of these get off my lawn kind of old <laughs> crotchety guys. He had three lines. He went in the room and I said, just go in, just be yourself. It's so charming. And then they'll tell you, go ahead. And I walked him through the whole thing, how to do it. He walked in and went, this is my first time ever doing anything. And it was like, oh my God, why did you he say that as charming as you are? I was like, oh great, okay. Blew it. Yeah, you gotta you wanna look professional, even if you've never done that. You know, they tell you like if you get called for like a movie and say they're like, We want have you ever horseback ridden? Because this character rides horseback. They tell you, say yes. And then when you leave, go take a horseback riding class. Because if you're, the, or at least take one class before you have to arrive at set. So you're not an, you know, you've not lied and you kind of learned. Yeah. Something. yeah. Afraid of horses or whatever. So, so let me, let me steer, uh, shift yeah. gears here uh, for a second. So, um, so I did a, a photography session with you a couple of years ago. Yes. And this was my first time uh, doing one of these in a couple, couple of years. Um, and the big difference was your approach, right? Your staff, everyone was very welcoming. It was very warm. Um, you're kind of nervous. You don't know what is going on, but um, you guys were very calming and professional. And that was not the case with most other times where I've gotten shots done in the past. So how did that approach develop? Why did it develop that way? Um, um, that's a good question. Um, yeah. Well, I think cause I, having uh, being, been an actor, I would say I was, I don't, I haven't done it in a long time. So I would hate to say that I'm still an actor, but I feel like I was, and I was pretty good at it at that time, but I had a lot of headshots uh, taken. I went and, got my headshots taken a lot. And I had a photographer tell me to purr. I had a um, like, 
like that was his way of making me make a sexy face or something. Like I had someone kind of yell at me, like berate me a little bit. And I looked, I already look, my eyes, I look a little scared in photos cause I have like these big, so I was like, I looked terrified in the yeah, picture. The big eyes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was trying to get from me. And I've had a lot of different experiences where um, it didn't work for me. And I think I kind of know what I want the photo to look like. So I already have a sort of vision for this and it's, it's a team effort. So it's like, and, and you, I know really well. So for me, like when I have people that come back to me, like that's the biggest compliment probably it's like, and I always enjoy, and there's like something with your second time too, where it's like, I did, I know that we did this, but um, that stuff's just important to me. That's for me is my job. So it's my job to make sure that you feel like you can open up, that it's not, that if you're nervous, you can breathe, that we're not scary, that this is not hard for me. So, well, especially um, if you're new to like, especially like Los Angeles is all new and different and everyone trying to play the game to have, uh, cause I had similar experiences where, right. where the, um, these were not very professional people is, is, basically what it comes down to. And I think uh, what you're talking about, that level of professionalism, respect for the actor, right. something that I did not see in the past, um, a respect for them as a person. Um, what a big difference. What it a big difference. Me, I would definitely say that I love, like I love actors. Like I love, like, and I love new people and I love meeting people every day. So the part of my job that's like fun and exciting for me is not necessarily the clicking the shutter, taking the photo part of it. It's all the other magic -y stuff that goes in. And it's fun for me to meet someone, to take their photo, to turn on the TV six months, year and a half later and be like, ah, I know four people in this show. Like I've shot like, over the last six years, I was watching, what were we watching? Bosch. And I was like, I literally had shot like four of them in the same episode. And I was like, that's why I love this job. Like that's, I kind of, I don't get to be an actor, but I get to vicariously through everyone, like see that success in people. And I think that's exciting and fun for me. As long as the energy of the person coming in that they bring that as well. You know what I mean? You get people yeah. that come in and they're very, they've already decided what the experience is like. Like it's very common to walk in and to just the first thing you say is, I hate this experience. I hate having my photo taken. Let's have a great time. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about I that. Can't wait. So, so you have achieved a level of quality of headshots. So let's talk about what that is, what that, what that looks like, what that means. Yeah, yeah. There's millions of different people, right? Thousands of them. And somehow you have to find a way to take a good headshot. So what are some of those qualities? What are some of the things that, um, that uh, make it a good shot? And then um, how do you get that out right. of someone? Well, the technical part of it is my job. And if you yeah. get your headshots back from a photographer and they look kind of dark and, you, and your weird shadows under your eyes and you're a little out of focus and you reach out to the photographer and say, um, are these are kind of dark or I'm concerned. And they're like, Oh, well, I haven't edited them yet. Like that is that excuse makes me go literally out of my mind because there's the photo needs to be lit properly in the, the photo. So the photos I give to people are already, they're done basically, unless you want to get rid of a pimple or soften a crease or a flyaway hair or whiten teeth, like that stuff. But the photo quality, like for me, that's what I give you. The, the other part of like what the actor brings, that's the scene work between us. Like that's, yeah, the, you air, mentioned that's that. the air between us. And that you, you mentioned that was some of your approach. You almost treat it like that. So talk about that because I know we have a bunch of performers that are watching tonight. We have all the different kinds of people, but, but well, maybe talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so sometimes people will get told, you know, write down like lines for each of your character. Like that's something that I've seen people walk in and basically they'll have lines for say like, um, 
their first character or the first thing they want to do is sort of a really sweet, fun girl next door. So they'll have sort of scripted lines. I don't care for that. And generally what I'll do is I'll kind of read them over so that I understand maybe what they were going for, but I don't really want people acting in their headshots because I think it, it creates a, it's like you're adding a layer in front of your headshot, right? Yeah. It's like you don't need to act. Like, just tell me. And honestly, like, I can tell people the thing I want their face to say. That sounds so weird. So like, I have people say, I need to look warm. Like, I, I need to look nurturing. This is a nurturing, warm mom character. And she's got all these lines where she's talking to her daughter or whatever. Like, and I'm like, no, no, just say, oh, I, and I'll be like, ask them about something. Like, do you have a, like the pets or a child? And like, what did they do yesterday? Oh, well, oh my gosh, my daughter is so cute. And I'll be like, tell me how proud you are of her. And they'll go, I'm so <laughs> proud of her. Snap, 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 snap. Say it again. I'm so proud of her. And all of a sudden I have this warm, nurturing mom, right? And then I can be like, this character is fierce. She's tough. She's takes no, no holes bars. I want like the strong, they'll want like the strongest, fiercest. And I'm like, everyone's, and it, it's so funny when I say, well, what like rather than having a line like about being upset or berating someone how about like what's going on right now in the world or who you really mad at and that's like oh yeah fuck that guy like all of a sudden like i'm like that give me that like we can all get really mad about what that thing we watched today or the you know the people or like so all of a sudden it's visceral in their body and their face i'm like that's what I want. And so for a headshot, you're, because you're not kidding. You're literally saying almost do us uh, like it's almost, uh, active. Or, yeah, active. It's very, very, very active. That's great. Okay. I get it now. I do that. But I, I, the thing is like, there's uh, the amount of people I shoot, like the people that I really have to do that with are probably like 20%. Like it tends to be people that are having a, that are struggling or that don't know how to, or worried about what they're, face is doing. I get a lot of people that hold it. They'll hold a smile like this while they're talking to me about something. And I'm like, you get rid of it. Like, let it like come and go. Like you smile because you feel ridiculous at this moment, like, yeah. or whatever, you know, but that's how I kind of play in a session. And it's a lot, it's a, it's work sometimes. Like sometimes at the end of a session, like I'm exhausted, the person's exhausted. You know, sometimes we've just laughed and had fun and it's just felt like nothing. And it's just depends on the person. Some people I can't do those tricks with because they're too big and animated. So everything becomes like forced and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I have to pare that all back. So it just depends. So you had mentioned something last time we had spoken that stuck with me just because it reminds me so much of just the approach to acting, which is um, uh, you had said something about your photography is um, the invisible art or, or can you talk a little bit about that or how you want your photography? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, well, cause so I'm part of a Facebook photography group and um, people po post their headshots and they want feedback on them and stuff. Oh, good. It's good, but it's like, sometimes I feel like I'm too harsh in there. Like I feel bad because it's like, it's a lot of terribleness. Oh, good. And I, and then there was, so there, like was, fun. there was a guy, let me do it in this, in this square. There was a guy, a photographer who posted, um, a little like sort of uh, rows and rows of his pictures, like as a little ad kind of thing. And everybody was sort of like this. So it was kind of this row of like tilted people. Like that. Yeah. And I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why is everyone tilted? Well, that's my style. Well, your style is getting in the way of the photo. That's it. And if the photographer's style or someone looks at it and is like, is that trees and traffic lights? Like, if that's what they're focused on, then that is 
not a good headshot. It's just simple. If I can't see your eyes and your color of your eyes, and I have to look at your resume to see what color your eyes are because it's not in your headshot, I can't see them, then that's, you know, or like headshots where it's like the person's at the bottom of the frame, like, and there's all this space. Like you look short. You're just, I think you're a short person because you're not filling the space of your photo. Like sometimes the photography and the art get in the way. And so headshots are not, that's it's my, always my feeling is headshots are not art. There's nothing artistic about it. It's really a, it's a tool. It's your tool that you have control over. And so when I meet with an actor and we work together, for me, we're doing teamwork for your tool. So nothing is a surprise. It's not like you go away and then a week later you get your proofs and you're like, oh my God, my hair. Nobody told me I had that stupid bang sticking down my head. And now they're all like that, right? I don't like that. So for me, this is like, we're doing this together. We look together. Mm -hmm. That way, when you leave, you knew you even took a photo with your phone. You know, you get your photos in a couple of days. You know exactly what they already look like. Yeah. There's no like, oh, can we change that background? It's like, no, you saw it. It's, it's not, and it's not about me. And if it becomes about the photographer or the photography, then it's fail for me. So, so with that in mind, where you do have the people that say, that is not me. Um, you know, you know, you've got people that come in all different shapes, colors, sizes, mm -hmm. um, stuff going on with the hair and all of that. So what are some of the things that you look for and try to do um, to help the actor uh, who you're saying is in control? Right. Of the what are the things they can do to help achieve success? So I think because we send out like a before the shoot thing. And people have literally said this is like the longest thing they've ever had to read because it's really detailed. And it's written because of all the people that already did those stupid things to help you from doing those stupid things before your headshot session. So what are some of the top ones that you see over and over that, boy, you really wish they would have read your lovely? Yeah, read the well, like, um, probably people do pretty, are doing better with wardrobe now, but wardrobe is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, just bringing, I always say like bring layers, like I'm a really generous photographer. So I'm happy to add blazers and a cardigan over a blouse and like, and, but if you don't bring that stuff, it's like you kind of miss out because you didn't even, you didn't bring another, just a casual jacket that we could maybe like just thinking that stuff okay. through. And then once you've gotten your clothes, laying them all out and kind of looking at them and going, oh wow, everything is green. Like literally, this is like a green shirt, a green blouse, a green jacket, a green t-shirt. How can I, what else do I hide? How, I didn't even realize, how can I break this up? Or yeah. what can I bring into this? Or I love green, I don't care, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but you know, it's just, it's also like age appropriate clothing and wardrobe that makes sense. Like we don't need to see young kids looking older even though i know they want to it's not it's not something you do for this business you you want to look you want to play younger yeah. you know if you're 18 and older and you can look younger that's great it's like don't push it um but then there is sort of a type of like girl that can be a little cooler a little sexier it just depends on the person it's very mm. specific to a, the person and I think that's what I think I've heard you mention before is, you know, finding that thing about that individual and bringing that out. So someone said yes or no to jewelry and glasses. I, um, I say yes to all of that. And my other thing, while, while there's rules and while there's like just sort of things that just don't work ever, there's ways to break the rules. And every once in a while, it's just someone wants to wear that turtle, black turtleneck. And I'm like, you know what, let's do it. And if we make it work because we pull their hair has to be up. You can't have a turtleneck and all this hair down. Like there's just things that you have to do, but we can break rules and make stuff work. But glasses and jewelry, I like it. It has to match 
what you're doing. So nothing makes me more irritated than seeing a, a man in a really sharp business suit who looks like he's standing in an alley with like side light and like gritty like brick behind him in a headshot. Like doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna wear, if you're gonna look elegant, like you're a rich guy, then I want it to look like you're somewhere, right? It's like the whole photo has to kind of match or it has to not have a background. Like, and even what it has, it can't fight you. It can't, it can't um, clash. I see a lot of people with like bright color clothes and then a bright color background that doesn't quite like a blue with a teal and it's weird. It's just stuff like that that I think is the photographer's fault. Like I blame the photographer for taking the guy in the fancy suit into the alley or in front of a park with trees when he would have been in an office building -y looking thing. So what about like um, shaving? Or oh, let me be really quick with glasses. With glasses, really quick, um, I always say find a similar pair at like a, a drugstore, a dollar store, or like a, a pair that you have that's maybe the same shape and that you can get the lenses popped out. Because depending on how they sit on your face or they have that green coating for anti-glare, it just you just see like green squares. And so I like glasses as an option if you wear them in your life. People that don't ever wear them, it's for some reason they it looks funny, like it doesn't quite work. And if you can't walk into the room with those glasses on and be really legitimately be that person, then I wouldn't do glasses. But there's a lot of glasses wearers and they look great. And if you have really funky, cool, unique glasses, I like those. And I say definitely maybe go to the optometrist uh, the day before and just have them pop out the lenses for you so that you can use them for your shoot and you can take them back. And if you can't find a similar pair, cause they're I've had a girl with like really unique, like big seventies cool glasses and jewelry, as long as it's just not fighting, if it makes sense, if it suits the outfit, if it doesn't it, like, and that stuff we just, I always say bring that stuff and then we can always nix it. Like, I'll be like, no, nah, not that. That's weird. Pearls, you're too young. You're 20, like, pearls look so weird. Unless it's like she's got a collar and a cool, it's a funky look. There's a lot of that. I recommend watching TV, seeing who's playing your roles on television shows and what they're wearing and taking those ideas. Mm. Go ahead. What were you going to ask me? Oh, I'm just thinking for us, you know, fashion challenged people. Oh, for dude. Good advice. Yeah. 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 It, I do get, sometimes I'll get like men who bring me like beige, like beige dress shirts and like really weird, like dark cranberry red, like, like, what are you, show choir? Like who wears stuff like this? <laughs> so don't do it then or watch a show, like find that character online, like find an actor that is just like, this is the actor that I always feel like. I connect with that always plays my parts like whoever that is wow. and, and see what cut like what they're wearing and what works and maybe it doesn't like for a shaving for guys or oh, yeah. um, I think you had mentioned uh, I like that we say uh, sure so we'd have you come with your beard you know mm. and we do like either your first look or part of it with the full beard and then some want to trim down to just like a shadow depending on the guy and then we would do i've had a guy take the beard to a mustache or to mutton chops and then to a mustache and then take it off which was kind of so yeah we're happy like we have a bathroom it's a studio so yeah we're able to do that. And I do say for men, I think makeup is a really good idea for women as well. But for men, especially if you're going to shave, I think it's good. And you always want to think of makeup as, um, with headshots as that you're, you're kind of in front of a brighter lighting, like the light is going to be um, brighter and softer. So it can kind of it can either like kind of take away features, especially for a man, or it can like um, it, it just not enhance as much for women. And I, and when you book a TV, well, used to, this might change, but used to be when you, the first thing when you book a commercial or TV show, you get to set and you sit in a makeup chair. And if you're like, well, I'm never gonna look like that in audition, I think you have to learn to do your makeup to, to fit. Uh -huh. 
you, it's just a skill that you should learn as an actor. You do theater, you do your makeup, right? You put makeup on your face because you're standing under bright lights and you don't look shiny or you just want to like, you know, want people to see your eyes. It's kind of the same, although it's an extremely close. And I, and some girls can do their makeup well. A lot of them can't do like proper coverage for headshots, just like found, like covering like, um, dark spots or flaws or like just the or the, and the right colors to like matching their skin like really well and flawlessly that's what my makeup artist is amazing at and then that also gives your headshots like you can do for a girl hair changes so you can do like different hair stuff that's subtle or that you can wave it we can like mess it up we can so throw it up so let's talk about that like curls or wigs or anything like that can you talk about that I think wigs only work for black girls or mm. people of color sometimes. Sometimes older ladies can do wigs um, up successfully. It's very tricky. My feeling is don't try to be someone else until you figured out what you can, who you are. Mm. So, right. So like, like there's girls that will be like, well, they want a brunette, but, and I'm a blonde, but I'll dye my hair. Like that's their thinking when they submit for a role that clearly wants a blonde. I, on the other side at the casting table, thinks that you don't know how to read a breakdown. And no, unless you're a star, we're not dyeing your hair. We have a thousand brunettes. We have a thousand five hundred blondes. Like we can find who we want without changing you. It's like I'm not gonna shave a guy. Like if we want a guy with a shaved bald head, we want him to have a shaved bald head. That's what we're asking for. Don't be like happy to shave my head. It's like I'm never gonna ask you to shave your head. I don't know what your head would look like. What if we like you and then you shave your head and your <laughs> Head is weird. Yeah, it's like we don't do that. Like casting doesn't do that unless you're a star. Then they'll be like, "Is she willing to dye her hair?" Of course she is. She's, you know, Amy Adams or whatever. It's like it's then you can ask them, and they'll pay you extra for it too. So let's so let's that's a good segue into so you've uh, uh, I've seen the cast of Hamilton on your website. You've you've gotten and and you also get like we were talking beforehand you know the person that got off the plane and landed in LA and need to get their headshot so you you see all the extremes and so um what is that experience um uh working with the different groups in terms of successfully getting to a final okay. product that actually is good it just it so varies i mean I kind of love newbies. I kind of love people that are like just open or like, I don't know, let's just play. And they come, they've read my thing. They come with some good wardrobe choices. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're open mind. Like there's an openness and just kind of a willingness. And sometimes when you're a little, when you've been in this business a little while, there's a jaded quality of like walking in like, well, I had good headshots in 1995. And I haven't had any I liked since. And this is, I wear, I only wear a black t-shirt because, you know, that's all. I just want to be me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, so here we go. Like, you're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to take a risk or, no, I don't put my hair up. And like those people, those are kind of my favorites. I don't know. I love everybody. But <laughs> the thing with the new, the new people are like, and, Everyone's like, why are kids so good at it? And kids are good uh -huh. at everything because they don't ask, they don't care. They're like, open. They, well, yeah. Open but but yeah. they also just have the experience in the photo session and walk away. Like their mom's looking at the photos. They could care less about the photos. That was fun. Let's go have some ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, bingo. Like just focused on the moment and the thing we are doing. And then like, not so concerned about the final product. You know who gave that advice once? Who? Joyce Ramsey. Do you know that I shot, I photographed her. Did you see like her niece? You told me. Yeah. Told me. Oh my God. So this was a, this, uh, this lady was an acting instructor at Michigan State University many years ago. 
Um, and I'll always remember how she would go and she'd audition and go to the casting and all of a sudden she wouldn't get cast, all these things. And it wasn't until she stopped worrying about it that it was just, you go in, do you have fun, have all the energy and then go get ice cream. Because when you're not, there's something with that, when you're not desperate, like there's something that everybody wants to know, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want that because, because for some reason, yeah, there's like, there's like a thing there. I know. She had the same same advice. I also love like the people that have just like, oh, whatever. I've been doing this forever. This is, I'm always a judge. I play a judge in everything. I'm a judge. I'm a judge or I'm a crotchety old grandma or whatever. I'm like, done. Easy. And we nail it. And like, that's fun. And they know and they're focused. And are we done? Did you take it? That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure we got it. Like, those are funny. Um, but like the cast of Hamilton, I mean, for me, that was like, that for me was my like happy place. So mm. I love musicals so much. So I kind of was like, I'm going to reach out to one of them and just be like, hey, I know you're all in town. I'm a headshot photographer and just sort of put it out there. And one of them came to me, Matheny Traco, and he's now a friend because I love this guy so much. And he was like on American Idol too. And he came and we had the best time. And I was like, I really want to shoot i want to meet your whole cast he went who do you want i'll tell them to come who do you want they all need headshots i was like so all of a sudden we're like shit because i'm booked up and i'm trying to like slot in these hamilton actors but it was so fun for me and such a like when i get to do stuff like that i'm like that's i feel so much like i'm so grateful and like i just drool over them well, that, that says a lot about you, though, and that's what I always remember was your curiosity, your drive, your, your, um, uh, you're not afraid to do something like that, that maybe someone say, oh, I don't really like it, but um, that curiosity, um, I'll always, you know, remember as a, a big part of, you know, who you are, and I think what makes you successful. Thanks. I think um, that it, if I didn't have that, like, I'd just get really stale and bored. Cause I'm doing the same thing basically over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like a, it's almost like a groundhoggy like process of like someone comes in, we look at wardrobe, I stare at them, at their face. I engage with them. I get them to do the best I can with me, like figuring this thing out. We, and then I give them their photos and they, you know, they go. And so if I don't in that process, like enjoy it or like, have like like learn about people every day then you know i'm not doing my job so i'm going to put you on the spot here okay go okay uh i'm gonna have you i'm gonna show you a headshot okay and i'm gonna want you to uh critique it okay okay did i take it uh let's see uh oh shoot maybe i can't do this uh uh here it is all right you you take a look at this and tell me your critique okay oh god you know when i took that um i hated that photo of myself (laughs) i hated it really yeah look at my that face like this is the thing this is the thing so um i I'm good at my job because I am so critical of myself that everyone that comes in and tears themselves apart, I look at them and I go, I get it. Like, I know what that feels like. I know what you're talking about because I also hate my nose. I also never liked, you know, that thing about myself or whatever. So when people are, it doesn't look like me to me. It's not funny. I get it. Like, and, and I think it makes me a better photographer because I can also like, um, I would know now if I was looking at that girl and she told me the things she didn't like about herself, I would know how to f- pose her so that she doesn't feel that way. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I think the smile is too big. Like, I don't, just honestly, like now, like you don't want to see bottom teeth in a smile. So it's too big of a smile for a headshot. Wow. 
It's black and white. No good. You're good. And it's black and white too. Yeah, so it looks 25, 30 years old, which it. You haven't changed that much, my friend. Oh, God. So this was one you might be familiar with. Oh, see, that's a great shot. That's when I look good. Now yeah. I'm all old and long hair and crusty. That's great. But one thing I noticed. Yes. Um, which is. You can see me in your eyes. I'm in every headshot. How'd you know that? Yeah, because I, everyone always talks about that. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean that's that of that's how I stand. Like. That little image is in every eye. Isn't that funny? And I've had people say to me, can you, uh, can you take Joanna out of my eye? And I'm like, then you'll have no pop. You'll have no sparkle. I'm the sparkle. <laughs> that you are. My vanity right there. Joanna, you are but the But look sparkle. how crisp and clean and clear and focused and fresh and sharp that headshot is. It's it's good. Great. No, it's very good. Um, I'd love to open up uh for any questions that people have i know we covered a wide gamut uh this yes. evening but i want to make sure i leave some time here because there's a bunch we can still talk about but uh, i'm interested to see if you have any questions go ahead and type them in the chat um again thank you very much for joining us um and uh i'm sure joanna is happy to so this is to theater and screen headshots be different? Mm -hmm. if That's so. one of my questions. That's yeah. a good question. They are different um, because the process of your audition is different. So, um, I mean, with theater, I believe it's still this way. But if you want to audition for something, you would be open. Is it an open thing where you just would show up maybe? Or you can... You can. Yeah. So say you want to go for a, a musical or a play, you show up to that call. So your headshot is comes in with you. And then me as the casting person flips it over and you're doing your thing and I'm taking notes on the back and I'm looking at your resume. And then when you leave, I have a sort of record of your face so that when I put my cast together on my wall, I can, right? So it's a little, it can be a little simpler. It actually just can be a little more like um, blank slavey, as long as it does tell me maybe exactly like age range and isn't, isn't um, some of them are so like, you don't want to take out all your wrinkles and everything where you look a t like we want the grandma and you're standing in front of me and I'm looking at this and it's, you know, you want it to be pretty honest. So a theater headshot just, it still should be good. It should still be professional, but it can be a little simpler, I guess. It also, usually they're less smiling. They're a little more serious for some reason, mm. especially in New York. They're very serious. Um, and a serious profession. Right. And then TV and film and commercials, as we say, is um, comes first. So I see the headshot first. Then I base calling you in from your photo. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's sort of the opposite process. So I see the photo first and then I go, oh, yeah, Michael, he looks great for this everyman dad because he's supposed to be more educated. But da da da. Or I might be like, no, the guy we're looking for is he's a little tougher and angry and gritty. And I don't get that from Michael, right? He's not that guy. He won't play. This is my angry face. Yeah. Making a really you know how angry face. I am. Um, and so that's the difference, I guess. So you want your, your kind of TV film commercial ones have to be kind of geared in that direction. And your film ones can be a little more neutral. And sometimes if someone's like, well, I'm auditioning for uh, school or this is for my college applications. And I think you can, wow. you can be a little more, it can be a t-shirt with like, and if it is a t-shirt, I want to see a collarbone for a uh, girl. Uh, uh, uh. If it's a guy and you're young, I don't want you in a button-down dress shirt. I want you in like, I want you to look your age. Like I hate mm -hmm. seeing kids in like suits. It's terrible. Uh, I, there's a question here that came in about um, uh, do headshots have more impact if the subject's looking directly at the camera? Yeah, you have to. Slightly off to the left or right. No, if you're looking off to the ref left or the right, then you 
then you don't understand the headshot. And then I think that it's not a headshot. It's like a snapshot or you, it looks like you don't, or it looks like you're cross-eyed and you like, it's that weird thing. Like, so I'm going to look, here's me looking at the camera. Zoom. And then just right here, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. So you really do, it, I'd be like, is there something wrong with their eye? Like, is there a reason they're not looking at the camera? They're hiding something. I feel like it's not honest. It's less open. You really want to show your eyes. There's no reason your head can't be in the middle of, or slightly to the side of the frame a little bit, and your eyes are boom into the lens. Like, that's so, what I think. So there's a question about, like, uh, you know, uh, the other place where people are looking at their headshot as part of your resume, like on LinkedIn that is yeah. representative of it. Uh, any differences or recommendations on that? How different or similar? For a business photo, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just want to look professional, right? So you, you want to look professional and warm, probably. You don't want to look like a jerk. You want to look like you care about getting this job. It's like, it's just like you're, it's your headshot for getting, uh, for showing you're a professional person. So it's whatever you would wear for an interview for that job is what mm. you would wear in your headshot, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, there's another one about uh, someone who is a pro dancer who yeah. was looking to get into acting. And you had mentioned you went to graduate school for acting. Um, uh, how did you get in? Um, did you get acting experience first and then applied? Like, what is that process? Oh, it's a, I don't know any, I, honestly, when I did it, it was 1999 when I went to grad school for the University of Washington. It was extremely competitive. I know that now a lot of programs are nixing their grad programs, right? There's, I, I mean, that process is hard. I. I don't know that you need experience, although I, I did have a, I had done a lot of acting like I did with Michael and I, those of you who didn't hear at the beginning, we were at Michigan State together and I did theater there and I played Anne Frank in the Diary of Anne Frank and Michael was my dad, Mr. Frank. Um, and so wow. I did theater in high school. I did theater in Michigan State. I went to San Francisco, did theater for two years. I did Shakespeare, I did everything. And then I decided to go to grad school because I was not a theater major in undergrad. And um, I ended up uh, at University of Washington. And I, for me, it was a great decision, but it's not for everybody. But if you're a dancer, not an actor, and I mean, I, would, I think now you have to get a coach for auditions for grad school. You have to work with someone like Michael. Um, it's a, it's a problem. It's competitive. Yeah. I, I, I don't really know what how it goes now, but they used to have Erdas and where you go and like a group of people would stand in front of you go That's one by right. one. Yeah. Yeah. There and, was thousands and thousands and there were several rounds. You go yeah. to the one city and then, you know, Chicago's up and then I ended up in New York for the finals to get into grad school. It's yeah. It's, yeah. it's very competitive like so it's it's and they charge you per application to audition so you want to be really prepared and just you know know what you're going to do and if you I want always, education if you can visit the facility and yeah. talk to people there or just actually see yeah what I, I, I think I actually flew to Seattle for my audition. I, I made, I went there because I really wanted to go there. So, yeah. Um, uh, hope that answered the question again. Uh, we still have time for other ones. If you do have some, um, uh, Catherine class ha had mentioned that she had seen Broadway actors posting videos of having done photo shoots over video call during quarantine. Uh, any thoughts on that? You know, like the quality, um, how well it would be received. Um, and, and maybe you can also talk about, you know, you've reopened right. in a limited way and you've made a lot of changes to your right. practice. Um, but maybe you can, your thoughts on that and maybe what some of the things that you've done. My feeling about that is, is just wait until you can go get your head just taken because otherwise you're just taking it's like, I'd be like, hey, Michael, like, come up a little, make sure your shoulders aren't shrugged, like, tip your head a tiny bit, there you go, and now to you, whatever. Perfect. Um, I don't know, the Zoom thing, I know that it was like a creative, like, thing where people were sort of almost directing, like, 
uh, creative shoots through Zoom and then taking them. And I think that was kind of cool and creative. I love stuff like that. But as far as a headshot, unless you have nothing, maybe, but I think just wait and go to a photographer. I reopened my space. I'm very lucky. I have a very large um, space. I'm in like an industrial um, area with a big roll-up door so and my ceiling is extremely high and it's all kind of the doors open mm -hmm. I have silk in the door but it's all open so there's no recirculated air it's very and we're wearing masks and face shields my makeup artist has two masks and a face shield on um, and rubber gloves um, and so we're just doing everything we can. Our bathroom is like in an area that we have air conditioning, but we're Lysoling before and between every client and cleaning. So I feel like we kind of, we feel safe, but I don't want anyone coming in that is nervous about that. Like I'm like, we're like, if you're not comfortable, don't do it right now. Cause that's the last thing you don't add that, but we are comfortable and we feel safe. So good job. Well yeah. done finding a way forward. I know it's hard. Uh, there's another one from Facebook. Um, can you give some do's and don'ts for makeup for people who don't have access to a uh, makeup artist for the shoot? You know, um, we always, I always have a, I, if you schedule with me, I have my makeup artist that I work with. So when people schedule with me, we schedule my makeup artist with them. Like we take care of that because she's amazing. She does hair amazingly and she knows what my lighting is like. If you can't do that and you have to do your own, then I say like, keep it as cl like clean and careful as you can. Like I want eyelashes curled, not too much. Like nothing should look chunky or thick or like makeup -y. It just wants to, you know, we just want to kind of bring out your features. So it's tricky because good, amazing makeup artists are actually hard, you know, are tricky, like harder to find sometimes. And if you don't know who you're getting, I do say pick the, whatever photographer you work with, go with someone that, that look at their site, look at their photos and say, does that a makeup artist that did this girl who has my same skin coloring, who did her makeup and then go with that person who understands how to do your makeup for your skin tone, for your um, um, ethnicity, for your features, everything. Yeah. You, and I remember she was quite good. Uh, who, yeah, just your staff is like, you've accumulated some very professional people all kind of working together as a nice team who all work together very well. Yeah, so because, like if I have that in place, my job is so much easier. Yeah. It's like, why did I make my job harder? People bring in their own makeup artists and they're terrible and I can't really say anything, mm -hmm. but I'll put, but we'll take a few shots. I load them on the computer. We look together and I might say, can we just bring down or I'm not, you know, can you adjust and blah, blah, blah. And they'll do it and I'll kind of massage what I want out of the makeup artist. But my makeup artist now, I've, we've been together for 10 years and we basically can just read each other's minds. Yeah. You know, she know, we know exactly how to work together. So why wouldn't you want to work with that person? Yeah, and if, and she's a, if she makes you look so good that you're like, I don't know how to look this good, then it's your job because you can look like that to take a class or like say, hey, will you Zoom make, you can do that with her too. She'll do a Zoom makeup session where she'll sit with you on Zoom and you'll have your makeup in front of you and she'll talk you through your makeup. Um, really? Yeah. So I wow. should, if anyone wants that information, they can email me. I'll, I'll put I'll put your website in here afterwards if people yeah. want more information. Mm -hmm. So um, there was uh, someone asking about you know hands and portraits, the use of them and different things and stuff. That's that's such a funny question because every time I say no hands, then someone does it, and you're like, ah, oh, it's so good. So it just that's such a breaking the rules kind of thing. Oh. Sometimes like it's cute or like it's, someone will just go, wait, what did you say? And I get that thing. And as long as it's not claws or like, what is your hand rest? What is your chin resting? It's not garbage. Like it doesn't make sense again. It doesn't exactly look kind of like you just did it. Mm -hmm. It has not to be like, natural. like, yeah, like it just had to have happened. 
and I took the photo and all, and it just all kind of is so cute. And then someone will come in and be like, I love this person's photo with their holding their hair. And it's just so weird. And I want to do that, but you can't, there's sometimes you just can't fake that. Like it happened and it was magical in that moment. And we'll find something different, you know, or people will love, like someone will look off and laugh and then it, it just get a funny like moment that just happened for them. Yeah. And so many people will want to recreate that for their photos, but you just can't. So it's okay. Sometimes it works once in a while, but generally I wouldn't, I don't like, I, cause it, especially if it's like, like this, like see how it's just popping up out of the frame it could almost, it's so weird. And also sometimes people's hands are different colors from their faces. Mm. But if we do it, we tuck hands. We have to make sure we see an elbow. Like there's little rules that I always help people if they mm. want to do a hand thing. Uh, how often do you have to update your headshots? When they, when you're like, uh, this doesn't really look like me anymore. <laughs> like what you feel like. Yeah. You kind of look at it and you're like, yeah, I, you know what? I and I what happened these it, last two years. My God, two years. Yeah, like I don't know. Like I don't really look like this. Like I've cut three inches off my hair, and I'm much thinner now. Or I, I'm not. I'm a little. I'm just. A, I'm in a new category for my casting. Mm. Like, I'm no longer the sweet bubbly. Now I'm kind of getting into that like a business you offer and I can have a job and stuff. I'm not, I'm coming out of that. You come in and out of like, but there's this funny phase from like 35 to like probably 40 where that you can probably go five years if you really don't change your hair much and mm. look basically look like your headshot. Well, I took 17 years off. So I went from young man in love to <laughs> middle-aged man in peril, you know, or distress. So. I played like kids. So I played Anne Frank and like, I was 13 year olds, like forever. I was always young, 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 the kid of, in everything. And then all of a sudden it's like, someone said to me, someone asked me to do something of theirs. And like the character's 45 and has, a, is actually a grandma. And I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not a I can't be grandma. You could. I, I know. Cause I'm 40, like I'm 46. I could be. But that to blew my mind. So I don't know. Like, I don't look like I could have kids, I don't think. You still look like a kid. My gosh. Whatever. Um, what's your preferred type of backdrops? Something like what's behind Michael right now? No, I don't like that. Michael. Yeah, near do I. It looks I like, this does it look like a, doesn't it look like a yearbook photo? Exactly. I, I and I'm like, it. it's like modeled blue. Like it's 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 computer blue clouds or whatever i just wanted to make sense i don't like and also he's wearing green and he's in front of blue which i don't like that together so i mean i'm just, not the artist here yeah yeah it just has to make sense like it has to kind of match and if it all matches and the photo comes together in a way then nothing pulls focus except your energy of the photo and i'm and i love a white or a really simple background i do i really like that but it doesn't work for everybody some people just look like there's they need something i i love a little depth and this depth or flat or colors or all of that tends to be an agent or person preference. You can have an agent that like is like doesn't want anything. They just want gray, no backgrounds, blah, blah, blah. You have agents that want it to look like something's happening, like it's a film shot, like it's out of, it has a lot of shadowy, blah, blah, blah. It's just a preference thing. And I'm fine with all of those options and I can do all of them in my studio space. Like I can make any of that happen. I just would want it to make sense. So if a girl's wear, if if you if the top you picked is polka dots or a little bit busy or has flowers or has some kind of maybe more pattern on it, then I would never. I would want the background to be very simple because mm. it just starts. Everything starts fighting, and if it takes away from your eyes and your energy and your face, then I don't like it. Uh, how many shots will an actor get out of a session typically? Oh, you know, I never count them. It's so funny, but it always ends up being the same amount. So I think because I've been doing it for so long, I snap for so long. 
it sometimes depends on the person. I will say the first look is the most because there's a settling in and kind of a uh, something happens with an actor when they're first in front of the camera and then they kind of by the end they're like so usually the first look took the longest for me to get to that place where I was happy and it is all about me people I'm just <laughs> um it kind of is. um and then uh by the third look we're like boom boom nailed it so I mean usually for three looks which we do a lot of layering and changing and blah 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 you can have like 500 to 700 photos in your gallery and that's after we've deleted all the and those are in my bathroom yes i've seen those bathroom of uh my it's, it's lovely it's my bathroom is plastered with like all the outtakes and they're real outtakes not like people pulling faces because i don't like that either you don't like it staged you mm -hmm. like to see yeah. the natural who the it's, person really is come out and capture it's, it's a badge of honor but actors tend to like they pull like they'll stretch their face so if i catch that like from someone then we keep it and put it in the bathroom well with that i also one thing with backgrounds oh. too one more thing thought with backgrounds um is if you're a brunette or you have dark hair it really needs to be lighter behind you and all these photos are in tiny boxes on those casting when casting directors are looking at all the pictures if your hair and background just kind of if it all melts in it doesn't it doesn't draw my attention so if you're a like if you're a blonde you can do anything but if you have dark hair at all i feel like there needs to be some separation and you can still do a gray but you just have there has to be a little separation so that it's clear that you're not just disappearing into like an abyss of backgroundness sort of contrast kind of thing and enough light in your eyes yeah well the light in your eyes is lovely joanna thank you so much for spending this hour with us um really really enjoyed having the conversation and i hope people um, got something out of it um, uh, oh, there, there was a question about how many different shots will an actor get in order to use? Um... That's up to you. So we do, like most, head, most headshot photographers will, will do it by look. So say you're like, well, I want something that's really casual and really just like commercial, like, I don't know if you're, you're a female, female. So if I want something really casual, like a cute, like a little t-shirt with like, it has a cute, like a little denim jacket or a yellow thingy, bright, blah, blah, blah. Then maybe your other look is your businessy thing, which is maybe like a little button down with a blazer and maybe have a cardigan for like, you know, maybe that's your second look. Some people do, generally three is the most popular because you get something that's really put together like, um casual and commercial and very like mainstream then something that's like this is my job that i would probably have i'm helpful honda girl with a polo shirt or target or i'm lily from at&t or sprint whatever all that stuff and then the third would maybe be something either sexier if that's right for you or edgier or tougher or maybe like fiercer like then you can go like this is like my black tank and my cool leather jacket like thing. And so you get those three. And what I like to do is if that is a black tank and leather jacket, then we just shoot the black tank and then we add the leather jacket. And then maybe you have like, you know, and maybe if you have a button down blue shirt cause you want to do something for work, then maybe you have a hoodie and it becomes like Silicon Valley and those kind of things. So if you think outside the box, you can always add, like get a lot of layering, but that's generally, people generally do two or three looks something that will work for yeah. and theatrically. Does Excellent. that? Well, I'll put your website in the chat so people have it. Um, yeah, and if you look on my site, although it's been not loading right, I'm trying to figure that out. But I do have a, if you look at my Instagram too, you'll actually see oh, yeah, a few more examples of kind of the same person, different looks. Sometimes I'll post like someone doing three different looks on there and you just scroll through or I, I have same actor, different look on my website, but I'm not sure that it's, it's been acting really funky. 
Let me see. I think I might have it. I can post it on there if people want to follow you. Uh, yeah, it is yeah. really interesting um, to see just that, what you're, what you're describing, which is you get to see those two, three different uh, looks. Yeah. Uh, so this is a good, like, it's a simple one. Here, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Same lady. Casual and corporate. And a ponytail, which I love. You can find her on Instagram at Joanna DeGeneres. Yeah. Joanna, thank you so much for spending your evening with us. I, wasn't, I didn't, didn't talk too much and I wasn't too boring. And if anyone wants to reach me, yeah, Instagram's good or email or whatever. Do you ever come back up to the Bay Area? You can. Uh, not re I mean, I always feel like I'm so busy. There are some photographers in the Bay Area that have been there forever that I, I took my headshots. Like Cynthia Smalley, does she still work? Um, up there. She's been there forever and Lisa Keating forever. So, I mean, I feel like there's, uh, no, I don't. That's the answer to that question. <laughs> uh, thank you guys. I'm so glad. Thank you for, thanks for listening. And um, I can, uh, you know, answer any questions anytime. And Michael, I adore you. You're so talented. And I oh, miss you. you're too kind. Thank you, thank you. And thank you everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, again, I encourage you to follow us on uh, Facebook at our uh, East Studio group and on uh, YouTube at uh, South Bay Musical Theater. Look us up. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Joanna. And if you're gonna shoot like mm. some other photographer, like, I do recommend doing due diligence and looking at, looking at other photographers every, like in New York, in LA, finding headshots you love, figuring out what you like about them and copying their wardrobe and being like, I liked this energy of this one. I loved how she had a striped shirt and a denim jacket. I love this. And just pull it and make it your board and then like make yourself a mood board and figure out your looks from that. I mean, plenty of, you can learn from all of that. It's See, all You still know how to steal like an artist. Exactly. Take yeah. steal. People steal from me. I've stolen from other photographers. We oh, all love you. You're still doing art. You just don't know it. Doing fine. Okay, I love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. Take care. Bye, guys. Good Thank night, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.